Hello and welcome to Nur Sultan, also known previously as Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. And today I'm going to be exploring this very interesting, fascinating, unique, perhaps eerie city. It was originally a tiny dot on the map in the middle of the Kazakhstan steppe. It was where nuclear weapons testing was done by the Soviet Union and Gulab camps were. It's really not the place that you would have thought that Nur Sultan, the man himself, would have made the capital of his newly independent country in 1997. But that's exactly what he did to show off the country's wealth to the world from perhaps its oil and other natural resources, which it is so rich in. Very few people around, as you can see. I'm going to begin today at the largest mosque in Kazakhstan, built only recently in 2012, but no less in its grandeur. So let's take a closer look. Walking up to the Hazrat Sultan Mosque, now the second largest in Central Asia. I've got some trousers on today because I wanted to go inside. If you're here in the winter, you'll definitely need trousers anyway. It's currently July. It will get to minus 30, I've heard, during the winter here. So be prepared for bitterly cold temperatures in Nur Sultan. I know I'm calling it the newly found name. It was only changed in March 2019. Most of you who are Kazakh watching or from Central Asia that are familiar with the city will be so used to the name Astana that you probably won't ever change it to Nur Sultan. You'll keep calling it Astana for the rest of your life, I'm sure. Absolutely epic. Lots of people just lying down and chilling out on their phones. Only a couple of people actually praying. So a few people visiting. It's a Tuesday, midday, in the middle of the working day, so I guess it gets a lot busier in the evening prayer. 5 p.m., 6 p.m., something like that. But still, it's very, very quiet, considering its size and considering how much money was spent on it. <laughs> I don't even want to know. outside of the Hazrat Sultan Mosque, which looks amazing from the outside. Here you can get the first proper glimpses of Nur Sultan, full of these metal and glass skyscrapers, which consist of apartments and office blocks, futuristic buildings, monuments, everything very new, mostly built in the 21st century. Crossing the main road, although it's not really logistically an issue, Approaching one of the main squares here in Nur Sultan. That pyramid-like building is one of the convention or cultural centers. Big monument over here, the National Museum in the far distance. And this is the Palace of Creativity. My question is, where are all the women selling flowers, the street vendors, souvenirs, trinkets, street food? There's none, no one's here. No tourists either. Can you see anybody like me pointing a camera, taking a picture of one of these buildings? I can't see a single one. It's very eerie. In fact, this is what I imagine something like North Korea to be like. I didn't think Kazakhstan or Nur Sultan would be this extreme. Honestly, uh, I am just quite taken aback by it. It's really impressive at the same time and really almost sad. There's not any people here to really admire it. Maybe it's because 
Nur Sultan is so far away. To get here you have to fly basically to Almaty and then take an onward flight. Unless you're coming from Russia, I don't think there are so many flight options. To reach the capital city, you really have to be going on a business venture. You can't just be in Kyrgyzstan or Uzbekistan traveling Central Asia and think, yeah, you know what, I'll try Nur Sultan. No, you have to pay a nearly $200 flight probably to get here. So that's a limitation. And probably part of the reason why the only ones that you will see here are gonna be Kazakhs themselves or Russians. I would say. I mean, if I see a Western tourist, if I see a Korean tourist, a Chinese tourist, I'll let you know. Before I continue with this video, I'm looking for somewhere to grab some lunch. So I just typed in restaurants and there's one a bit further down this road. There is quite a bit of traffic here to be fair. Most of them are delivery trucks transporting things to build more buildings and apartments and office blocks. I really find the style of the buildings, the architecture, it's very unique. Now I actually quite like the design of a lot of the buildings here. But how do you describe it to someone? Almost as if Thor or Loki, if they decided to build a city, maybe it would look something like this. So I found a place to eat just here. Millennium, restaurant and craft beer. So relatively high-end place, nobody else sitting down at lunchtime. So having crossed the road, I'm now entering towards the National Museum of Kazakhstan. This long entryway here to reach it. Stunning views of the mosque in the distance over there. The building of the National Museum of Kazakhstan is absolutely enormous. Here we have the statue of some fighters on horses and the surrounding views, the mosque in the distance. And it is very impressive, super modern, new, grand. I think it's actually free to enter, but if you want to bring a camera, you have to pay 500 tenga to take pictures or videos. Some pretty impressive paintings as you walk in. Guess who this is? You got it. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. That's the man this city was named after earlier this year. And guess who that guy sitting in the chair over there is as well. called the Hall of Gold. It's a bunch of shining lights illuminating. We can see here how things might have looked back in the day along the spice route. Kazakhstan occupied part of the Silk Road. It's quite nicely recreated I have to say. So I just finished looking inside the museum there and it is really impressive inside. Perhaps a little bit lacking in information and at times there's a whiff of propaganda as most national museums tend to have I guess. It is impressive though, very modern, there's a lot of artifacts and things that you can look at to imagine what it would have been like to live in Kazakhstan many hundreds of years ago and it is definitely worth a visit considering there's really no entry cost. So having left the National Museum which you can see in the distance I'm now walking through this garden area to reach the pyramid-like Palace of Peace and Reconciliation. 
doesn't really seem to be a path so I'm just walking through the grass. Great views of Astana in the distance, Nur Sultan I should say. This was a 58 million US dollar building. What is it used for? Good question. Once every three years the world leaders of traditional religions meet here. Different apartments and buildings actually here. Construction going on still. Constantly expanding this city. I think a lot of investment is going in towards it as has been since 1997. If you're living here, all this area you have, if you want to go for a jog, if you want to go walking, if you want to sit on a bench, read a book, quietly sit in your own silence, it's perfect for that. It's a huge garden area in front of me, all these benches and different pathways bending through. And if you really appreciate architecture, then of course, Nur Sultan is without question a place to take a look at. Having walked through the park, I can now see the presidential palace on the other side of the Ishim River there. Moving on from just next to the parliament building earlier on, I've now come to the Beitarek Monument, which may well be the most impressive building of the lot. It's this giant tower that consists of a metal bird's nest, some sort of golden orb in the middle there. It's supposed to represent post-Soviet Kazakhstan. From this area, we can really get a good idea of what the architecture is like. Many different blues and golds in the glass metal style that we kind of see everywhere. Kameji! Yeah? Krasava! <laughs> I can't speak Kazakh. Good. Salam, right, okay. salam. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, welcome. Okay. Welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> Very friendly locals here. As you might be able to tell, it's raining right now, so I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm right here by the Khan Shatir, which is a large shopping center and architecturally another interesting building worth checking out. Right at the end of the long stretch, where you can see the monument I was at earlier, behind the Nur Sultan sign, behind that, the presidential palace, and then on you go back to the pyramid where I was earlier before that, next to the mosque. It's all in one line. It's all been planned very carefully. At night time, Nur Sultan is worth checking out. If it's not so cold and if it's not raining, um, lights everywhere. I can see rain droplets on my lens right now, so I'll leave it for now. I'll see you then. Peace.